welcome back to another episode of Style and City Diaries. Brought to you by your favourite and fabulous cousins, Prinny Ray. And I'm below. Yes! yes! If you are a new cousin and you found us through Apple Podcast Spotlight, welcome. Welcome to our podcast. You may be a bit overwhelmed because we really do have so many so episodes. Many. But don't worry, you'll always find a description explaining what the episode's about and also timestamps so you can kind of figure out where you want to start or what you want to do with it. But really what you should be doing is going all the way back to episode one and binging on everything because not only will you catch up on any like fashion news or pop culture stuff you missed you will just get to know us inside out exactly that <laughs> if you are loving the show don't forget to follow or subscribe so you get notified when a new episode comes out and if you're really really loving it leave us a review and share it with your bestie wow all right sit back relax and get ready for a bumpy ride <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Hello, God. chick. Hi, it's We've got two back to back guest episodes. I know. It hasn't felt like it, has it? No, it hasn't. I feel like cause they've been pretty, like, like, like relaxed, yeah. like conversational. Love. So it wasn't so, like, oh my God, like, do my homework. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? How you been? Been all right. I've been, um, I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. We haven't really spoken. We haven't. How strange. We go How through sad. those motions. Yeah. Why have you not why are you not talking to me? Mm. Dunno, no reason. <laughs> She's like, well basically now that you asked me <laughs> <laughs> Why are you not talking to me? Um, no reason, you know. Yeah. Do you know what? I I mean it's very dramatic. It's literally only been four days. I've not had headphones. Right. And I've just been really just off your phone. Just detached. Mm. But not it's weird, it's like it's like I'm here, but I'm not here. Yeah. But I'm not here as the me I've been for this year because the me I've been this year has been all about work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to find a separation between me in work mode and me. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's like, what do I do when I'm not working? And I feel like that also feeds into us not talking to each other because I'm not saying everything is about work, it but it usually does. That. Yeah, and I don't end like up that. Being work, so it's like. Prinny will just text me like the we transfer link and I just po- and we don't even say anything. It's just like that's it's that's so sad. And it is sad, but I do get it because then you do get that separation from work and you actually get to go and Because then your I life. don't talk to you. But then I don't talk to you. No, not you be my work colleague. I know. Oh my god, that's so How disgusting. Mad. It's a bit sad. That is quite okay, we need to actually like talk about we do sometimes though. We kind do sometimes of. talk about normal things. Yeah. But, but like, then because we save it for the it's difficult and that because as well. A lot of our, the reason why the podcast is so fantastic is because a lot of our conversations are us having the conversation yeah. for the first time. And it's like, you want to talk, but then it's like, God, I want to talk about that on the pod. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, I don't know, we need to figure out like a balance on that. Yeah, it's interesting. But um, not yeah. how we can be cool and like friends and not colleagues and cool. But it's hard because we want to be friends on the pod too. Yeah. Like everything leads to work. Oh. I don't know how we manage that. Forget. How have you been? Yeah, I've been good. I'm a little bit poorly. Oh, I you? just want to apologize in advance for my nasally sound because if you're an OG listener, <laughs> you will know that one of my biggest pet peeves is nasal yeah. sound. I'm like, just clear your throat. So when I get a blocked nose, I feel so uh, hypocritical because mm-hmm. just clear your throat, but I can't because it's blocked. Oh, so yeah, apologies in advance for the nasal sound. Yeah, I'm just feeling a bit under the weather. I think I'm just like mad burnt out, mad mm. overtired. Um, I just I just need to get some sleep. Mm. I'm looking forward to these four days oh, off. Oh, the long weekend. No plans. Yeah. Just me and my bed. I love that. I've been getting good sleep lately. Have you? The well, last you couple been of talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, the last couple of weeks I just made a conscious. I think it's that switch off. It's like anything that's not done by Friday. I'm not. Yes, yeah, I'm not done. working overtime. Like it's it's oh, it's quiet for that. Like I'm not doing that. Yeah. So yeah, I got decent decent sleeps. When I go out, I get home at a decent time mm. before midnight, which is fantastic. It makes such a change, you know. Such a difference. Um. So yeah, I'm, feeling, I'm actually feeling quite restful and I'm looking oh, forward to the nice. the longo, well, yeah, for the Longish. latter part of the longest weekend. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like I'm just in a bit, like, I just need, like, to take a beat. Like, my room is a mess. Oh, I feel really? like 
yeah, I feel like I've gotten into like a, you know, I go through those motions. Mm. I'm I'm in that motion of just like, don't want to do anything. Really? Not don't want to do anything, but I'm like, my room's a mess and I know it's a mess. It's on my mind, it's mm. on my mind, but I can't do anything about it because like my body won't let me do it. You're also quite mind. in and out though. Like, yeah, you're I'm busy. very much yeah. like work, home, mm. get change, leave, yeah. go out, come back, sleep, yeah. get up. And go, I don't really have the time. No, you better and do it before your mum comes know, and knocking mom, on that door. No, literally. <laughs> but I also, I'm like purposely not finding time because I really just don't want to do mm, it. Mm, but I know the minute I do it. You feel so much better. I'm going to feel better. My head's going to yeah. be clear. And I feel like, so I do really want to use this time to just like have a bit of a reset. Mm. I feel like I'm due a reset because I've even been slacking on like our, our 12 week year that word was on my mind on my way coming slacking no <laughs> <laughs> i mean there were many words that you said it's a great one to pick no hard reset oh yeah and i was just i was sitting on the bus and i was like i just feel like i need a hard reset but i don't really know what i need a hard reset on but i yeah. feel like i need a hard reset on something like yeah it's just a shifting moment you know yeah you pick you're me, over there you over there me. i think it's because i think we're at the end of the 12th yeah year. so it's like we it are. actually makes a lot of sense it's like whoa bare hard work like you're tired you're no. burnt out you've been working hard so it's like i need a hard reset do you know what this is like when you get to the end of a year and you're yes! like who do i want to be <gasps> exactly oh it's so the hard, it's reset, hard era. reset era before we start the school year again wow and we have like <laughs> in like one week after. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts on like the things that you, like, I mean, it's high level, early days. But yeah, any things for like 12 week, yeah. No, like in terms of when you think of like, you need a reset, is there anything particular, or you just want to like, oh, I need to just, start? I need just to fucking tidy up my room, okay. clear out my clothes. <laughs> yeah. That is a hard reset for me because like, it's a mess. Like, mm. I don't just, when people are like, oh, my room's messy. Like, no, but your room's, I've never been in it. Maybe I've never been there on a time when it's like, that everything's messy. on the side of my bed. But my your shelves mess, are fucked. You, ha it's, it's you have like, a, clothes. Yeah. Yes. you have like a it's like a clean like you have a way of like pushing things in a corner no, like it's a it look, yeah. yeah like it's never there's not but never like a bombshell no, no, no. but you know that you need yeah. to like yeah. i need to do that i need to like maybe and i'm thinking obviously now that we're going into spring mm. this is like the best time to do a detox yeah. people always do the detox in winter which is the worst time really the new year should start in spring mm. So in winter, like you're still hibernating, your body doesn't want really want to do that. Whereas yeah. now I feel like maybe I should do that 10 day detox I was doing again. Okay. Just like flush out my system, wash my hair. I don't fucking know. Just like start over, yeah. sort out my clothes and like begin again, eat some good food, mm. lots of great, do you get what I, I yeah. just feel like I just need like a health boost. And like, that's like my hard reset. Mm. Is that Love. not what your hard reset is? Mm. I think my hard reset is jumping back on the discipline that I yeah, had a yeah, lot yeah. earlier in the year. So like <clears throat> resetting that. Um, but I think that I feel like I'm entering a new era in my mind. And I really just want to lean into passions and things that I love and reinvigorate hobbies mm. yeah. outside of the Our work hobbies. stuff. <laughs> um and I also think I'm gonna probably do a hard reset on my wardrobe. Yeah. And I, just, I feel like I've been saying this for the for how 10 hundred years we've had this podcast. Um, but I, there's this um, creator I follow, Ling Hustle. I don't know if anyone knows her. She's actually an artist, UK artist that has now moved to America with her mans. And I love her music. It's very reminiscent of like Tink. Yeah. Um, and anyway, it's long story short, she's kind of, put music on the back burner typical the music's not getting love mm. it's like you've fallen out of love of it but she's really leaning in leaning into her fashion bag right. um and i've been following her and she, i've recently stumbled upon a video that she did on tiktok and she was talking about how um if you want to reinvent your style the best place to start is with your shoes she said she used to be really like tomboy style like very like sneak ahead that kind of aesthetic but she wanted to elevate her fashion but mm. what she found was that she'll get clothes but, but what's she no wearing shoes. it with the trainers and stuff so yeah. she was like you know you have to have like a good pair of like solid shoes a ballet flats a couple pair of boots you have your trainers that you wear but they're not really like hype beastie they're just mm. things that you can play yeah. around and then when you 
like you start with the shoes as your core and then you and build. then you get the clothes because I find that sometimes I get clothes and I'm like I really love this and then I'm looking at my shoes like what the fuck, fuck am I like, gonna wear with it like what do you know what I mean and sometimes it's like <clears throat> the <throat> shoes really let it down and we take for granted how important shoes mm. are most of the time because we all have so many shoes that you feel like, oh, I've got my bases covered yeah. though because I've got a boot and I've got a this, but it's like- It's no, not the boot that I need. Do you know what I That's mean? That's so interesting. I was thinking about that when I was walking here. I saw this girl walking and she's wearing these like her, uh, like heeled loafers, should I say? Mm. And I was like, God, they're so hot. And I was like, I just don't even have, sh- I don't have, sh- I don't have shoes. No. I have my baguettes. <laughs> and I can't wear and my I can't baguettes. wear my baguettes. No. Um, I have no shoes. Yeah. Like I literally don't own a mm. shoe, like a flat shoe. And that's where the, like, it's not where the outfit starts, but it's what will kill it. Yeah. Or bring it to life. Bring it to life. Um, where do you get the shoes from these days? Well, so I've gone on all my apps and I'm going crazy with my favorite tab. Right. Um, I, I set up a Vestier account. Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of. What does Vestier? Oh, it's, designer. Um, designer, like pre-loved. And there's a lot, and it's international as well. Right. <clears throat> there's a lot of like new with tags, barely worn, yeah. nice shoes. Like what surprise points really say? Like, let's be honest. No, like some of the stuff. Let me let me let me open, let me open up my app and see what's in my favorites. So uh, there's these Clarks. Um, I mean, this is not an example of anything. Oh, like, Clarks. Look, this <laughs> this this is not aligned with what, but it's just something I favorite. She said, "Yeah, Bestiaire designer." So there's okay, these no, Clarks. No, forget it. No, <laughs> no. No, I'm not even going to discuss that. <laughs> right, I, I don't even know how to use the app. How do I go to my favorites? Oh, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so we've got like these Ganny boots, eighty-eight pounds. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you know, not bad. I've got some Todd's, um, little petite heels, eighty-eight pounds. They love it, eighty-eight pounds. Mm. I'm seeing Bottega Ballet flats, eighty-nine. Fine. You know, okay, yeah, good. Off good. white flats, eighty one. Okay, like, we're not we're not terrible. No, 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 no. Rag no. and bone, eighty pounds. It's Tory not Birch, breaking the bank. Like, that pounds. is literally how much a you shoe get a is shoe. In yeah. Do you get? And these are like never worn with tags because I always do condition. I don't. I'm not. You know me. In the she shoes, doesn't like so to share. She shoe. can't. She can't do that. Like there's one that she put as um, is like new without tags, and then in description she's like barely worn. I'm like. I'm on a message mean? like, is it new or is it barely worn? <laughs> like, has your foot gone inside this? Let me, how many like, times? Biggest struggle. <laughs> like, how many times? Like more than five. Oh my God. <laughs> um, so yeah. So and I, and I think I'm going to break it down into like, okay, like this for these next few months, I'm going to focus on sorting out my shoes. Mm. And then I'm going to go into like, jack- like jackets are another thing. Oh, I don't have no coats, brother. You'll Zero. get dressed, yeah. And, and you're I'm like, like, fuck so what, I just go <laughs> naked. Like, what the fuck is this? My especially when it's out. especially when it's not summer. Obviously, we're going into summer, so maybe so you different. can you can just about get away with like not sorting out your jackets yeah. until the latter part of the year. Um, but you need a good jean jacket. You need a good jean jacket. You need a good, a good trench. Good trench. Uh, a good a leather. Nice, a nice cropped situation. Mm. Uh, to be fair, I'm alright for summer. Yeah, I just wear my Levi's jean jacket mm. i wear my my cropped cream little zara thing yeah clips are go mm. uh uh my all my my french connection little green shiny jacket yeah. thing you know yeah she's think, a keeper yeah i do need a trench though mm. Mm. Do I really, i'm not really a trench girl if i'm honest i'm not a trench girl it don't suit me no you tried one yeah i've worn before but mm. Mm, it's not me. It doesn't fall down on me like the way right. I want it to be. I just feel I so love big, a up, big up, big up in it. I feel like I look my I look like my best self when I'm wearing a long line jacket. Mm. This I don't know any petite girls can relate. I find when I wear sh- short jacket, it does something to my proportion that doesn't make sense. In, mm. I I don't think it yeah. looks good. Sometimes it does. For <clears> the most part, it doesn't. I think because I have long legs. I don't know. So mm. just it's a very bizarre situation. Well, fair, do um, you know who's mm. actually petite? Who? And I used to be obsessed with her. Who? Freya Killen. I think you've told me this before. Yeah. Bro, the girl looks so tall. She's like five three. Oh, she looks. She's got long legs. She's got long legs, short torso. But I was like, whoa. Well, do I look like I have short torso? No, I know I have long no. legs. I don't. I look... don't think you have a short torso. I think my my torso is normal, but my legs are long. It's not yeah. like half. It's not. Because I'm short torso, long leg. 
Yeah, you're long leg. I'm a tall leg, mate. But you're taller. Yeah. You're not that tall. Amber thinks she's 5'10". She's like 5'5". Five five. I asked, I asked, um, <laughs> who's I was the other day? Oh, mate, oh, mate, Razor. I was like, mm-hmm. Razor, do you think I'm tall? He's like, yeah, yeah, like, like you know, for like a woman. I was like, how old, like, how's he? He's like, 5'7". Like I was like, thank you. No, but the, the you. consensus is that people think you're 5'6". Have you heighted yourself? Have you? Was it? What are you saying, Wade? When <laughs> you checked your height, is it heightened? You know, like you check your weight. Like, have you, have you your weighed height? yourself? But why do you have not you say, measured yourself? Why? But why do you not say have you heighted yourself? Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, have you checked your height? What's the What's the past tense of fight? Fought. Oh, fuck. Why fight? You always say fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Come There's on. this guy on TikTok that just goes around asking people like, "What's two plus two? And someone's like, "No, oh, come on, brother." And he's like, "Have you seen him?" And then he yeah. asks one. He's like, "What's the what's the past tense of fight?" And he's like, "Fighted." He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "You sure?" He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Okay." He's like, "What's the square root of eight? Is that square root? He's like, "Raw." Nah, eight can't go into eight. He's like, "No, it can." He's like, oh, "Must be something like three point five or something, isn't it?" No, square root is 16. Sorry, the answer is 8. Yeah, I was going to say, Sorry, yeah. Square what root is the 16? square root of 8? There... Square root of 8? 4? No, two. 4 times 4. No. There isn't. There isn't a square root no. of 8. Is there? <laughs> <What's> <laughs> the... <laughs> Fact check! <laughs> this is why we need an intern. What is, is a, square a square root, root of, of eight? 8? Is it not 2? Is it not like 2 times 4 is 8? 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 8. There isn't. It's fucking 2.8. 2. 2. 8. Come on. But like in Almost. whole number, in whole number terms, like there isn't a whole number What is the square root, root of 16? Four. four. Oh, I said eight. The square root of, that's 64. Square right, root 64 right, right. is eight. I'm not stupid. <laughs> no. I'm just ill. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got a B in GCSE maths and I was in top set. Yeah. Thank you. Anyways, it's really funny. So I thought I'd ask you since no, you said yeah, heighted. No, yeah, I saw the, what, what's the, the guy, I think they asked him like two plus two and then he started going on to some speech like. Yeah, he was like, it's all a lie because yeah. two ain't even a number. This is, did you see? It? And the guy was like. It's taking it too far. Just say you don't know that. It's no, false. literally. Oh gosh. Right. Anyways, the last time I heighted myself, it was like five, six and a half. Okay. Five, six. Okay, yeah. Just right. over five six. All right, makes sense. So I'm, I'm five three point up. five, so five four. Yeah, exactly. Five right. seven. Five, done. Yeah, five. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, um. What's your martini moment? Oh my god! What's my martini moment? What is my martini moment? <laughs> What is while well, she's thi- while well, she's thinking about yeah, this for any think. new listeners, Martini moment is where we do a little cheers for the week, a little toast yeah. of the week, a nice little highlight because you don't have to always wait for big things to celebrate. Sometimes it's a little things each week that just give you that little boost. Yeah, I don't want to be a negative Nancy, but oh. I just don't really feel like I've done anything that's oh, like really outstanding as of recent. Oh. Um, <gasps> Oh, I hit a thousand followers on TikTok. Oh guys. yeah, cheers! Thanks. That's my martini. Cheers! Moment. Ding, 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 ding. What's yours? Um, my martini moment is um being intentional with my downtime and really just like refinding my fun and joy. I had a really great weekend. It was stunning, Good. but it wasn't like wow, crazy. Like no sleep, club. Yeah, it was just just a perfect balance. Went to the V and A late. Went to else did I go went to a baby shower and went to this charity fundraiser um in our area with friends and it oh, was that's just like nice. weekend with friends all around was just um it's yeah. really nice oh good for you I've yeah. just had a epiphany a piff I think I I don't know if I'm ill I, it might be hay fever yeah it's given the same symptoms you like sniffly and coughing. sniffy itchy eyes cough but yeah. it's not a real cough yeah maybe i'm not really ill because it's just like pollen stuck yeah in um yeah, yeah cheers go to and get girls. olivia yeah i need to me effie yeah this yeah, year has not actually hit me not yet no, Joking. I'm I'm early. It should be now. Yeah, I'm an early bird. But because I'm two years of that hard stuff, I think maybe it's in my system. I killed it. <coughs> You're in my system. God willing. 
What's that song? Yeah, it's some old school house song. Oh, in my system, in my system, yeah, in my system. Uh-huh. Speaking of music, quickly before okay. we actually like get into what the podcast is about, I just really want to say I am so happy to see P Diddy going down. I'm so happy. If P Diddy doesn't have a hater, it's because I've left the planet. I am overjoyed. <laughs> Under the jail. Under the jail and all the associates, everyone. I want everyone. I want everything to come out under the jail. All of you. So I'm like not new to the goss, but okay. like obviously new to the goss. Yeah, like I've not yeah. really been following yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So me and Pretty were like talking about it yesterday, and were we? Yeah, we were. Oh, were we? Because house got raided, and you. Found oh yeah, out shit, and it. I showed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we were. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't Sorry, do that. Don't, I, I forgot. Like I'm, I make things up, um, <coughs> and. Um, and I feel like obviously, you know, our phones listen to us. So like as of recent, like the phones have just been listening to me and I've been getting videos and I'm sending it to Prinny. I'm like, oh, oh my God. days, look at this. She's like, it's fake. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, oh, I am the WhatsApp auntie <laughs> no. that like just believes the videos. But, 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 but yeah. I watched this really sick video mm-hmm. on TikTok, on Twitter today. Yeah. And it's this woman talking about how like P. Diddy takes the souls of people. Mm. And like, they're like, oh, you're not dead. When you're dead, it means like the the aura of God is gone. It, you're passed away. Mm-hmm. But basically talk about how like when people pass away, like Diddy like takes their soul, like someone to do Kim Porter, like he mm-hmm. tried to take her soul and then he starts talking about Offset. She starts talking about Offset. Oh, it's Offset. And I was like, what the fuck? Why is Offset? Didn't take off die? Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, why does she keep saying Offset? And then she's like, something's gonna happen. She's like, March, 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 Easter, March, 2024. Oh, you're talking about the, the psychic? Yes! Yeah, yeah. She predicted that in 2000. Um, I was blown the F away. I saw a bit, send me that part of the video. I saw a video and it was just a clip of her saying to Cardi B that you need to get away from Offset, your husband. Like, he's jealous of you and all of this stuff. And I think <clears> she <throat> said that before they split up. Um... But the more time passes, the more I really. Like, I'm I believe just, in that spiritual stuff, you know. No, hundred, hundred percent. Like taking the souls and things like that. Yeah, like, yeah. I believe in that. Well, I call well, me I, crazy. I need to watch the video to understand the How point. Am I, I do find believe. It? No, it's fine in your own time. I do believe in um, like the spiritual realm and people predicting things and all of that. But the more time passes, the more it's becoming very apparent that the Illuminati is real. And I don't want to be like that person, cuckoo conspiracy theory. But everything is connected. Why is Diddy's bodyguard caught up in the storyline of Michael Jackson's passing? Why were you the head security? Why was Michael Jackson saying Sony are going to kill me? Because Michael Jackson technically owned a lot of Sony. You mentioning Clive Davis, Clive Davis being a very close ally with Diddy, president of Columbia Records. Michael Jackson's passed away. Whitney Houston said she's fearful of Clive Davis. She Whitney passes Houston away. passes away. We know that Diddy has connections with Tupac's <coughs> passing. Kim Porter, various other, like, it's all connected. Yeah, it's all that. It's all Jay-Z, that. Dame Dash, Aaliyah. I'm um, not, listen, let's, Pizzagate is caught up in What's all of Pizzagate? this. Pizzagate? I know Pizzagate. So Pizzagate, I hope I'm not saying this wrong. But this is basically, it's, well, it's alleged, but I hope I'm kind of relaying what Pizzagate is. So, you know how, do you remember when, um, oh, 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 what's that? Wayfair. Remember the whole Wayfair thing and they were saying that they were selling certain like wardrobes on the website, but actually they were, it's human trafficking. Yes. So they were like super. Yes, 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 so yes. So Pizzagate is similar, but pizzas. So they order uh, pizzas, but they're actually but they're ordering, ordering their children. type of like child. Yeah. Yeah. So they're saying that like all, even like the Jeffrey Epstein and di- it's all, it's all, oh. Connected. connected I ask this question all the time it's rhetorical and I just don't get Sorry, it, trigger warning like, trigger warning sorry trigger warning whoa but like what 
I'm laughing because like I think I hope I know. I think I know you're gonna. Triggy was always like, "You guys always do trigger warning after you say <laughs> the trigger." Sorry, just sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Hear me out. <laughs> trigger warning, like essay. Um, but but they're all like the people in power always pe- like yeah. pedo to do with sex to do this. Like, like, I just what is the obsession? Like what is the obsession? Yeah. Like I just why isn't the poor man doing that? Like do you get like mm. I, I don't get it. I, I just, guess he's got more things to worry about than bloody shagging. It's just and it, getting his money up. I don't fucking know, but it's just weird because it's it's generation after generation. Yeah. Like there is no end to it. It's like why are all of you weirdos obsessed with kids? I hope that this is like the beginning of, of the end. an end where you're <clears throat> dismantling the in- global institutional Institution. like. It's messed up. Like even those videos resurfacing of like Diddy and Justin Bieber doing some kind of like BTS vlog stuff. And there's allegations of things. And when I think about it now, you see Justin Bieber and he looks like a shell of himself. Yeah, he's not himself. For the last few years, it's like, are you okay? Yeah. Are you? People think he hates his wife. He's like, I just hate myself. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? They must have a lot of trauma and PTSD. Have you seen? um, Did you watch Nickelodeon? I did. I have Scarlet. No, it's fine. So basically, (laughs) no, it's fine. Just had to ask. Oh my god! I know what you're talking about. Quite on set. I need to watch it. Yeah. Where is it on? I probably on these websites. I'm not too sure, but Amanda Bynes. So she was. You know Amanda Bynes. The Amanda show. Amanda Show, yeah. she's the man. She was literally like the Lindsay Lohan of yeah. um, Nickelodeon. Mm-hmm. Bro. They the ruined state that girl. Of her, and I don't now. even want to use the word state because it sounds like I'm being rude. But the state of her now. I can't she's even like say she's in a and out of herself. Of like being like, she's been institutionalized, drug addiction, like drug problems, this and that. Like she's not her. Like she she's looks so different. Her. Like. It's so heartbreaking and like the things that are coming out yeah. and how they sexualize the girls like Ariana Grande and Drake from Drake, mm. Drake and Drake, Drake, Drake and, and Josh. Josh and you can't and even Britney's sister. Yeah. And it's just, I just don't get the obsession with wanting to like sexualize kids. Hollywood is, Hollywood is sick. And if that's the price you have to pay for fame, not worth and it. glory and all of this stuff. Where are the parents? Well, I just think when it comes to my oh. personal view on like child actors and child stars, I just feel like their parents are living their dream through their children. Like you know how like dad. I want to be on set. So I, I'm not leaving you there. I'm there behind the direct. Do you know what I mean? I mean? If you say I can't be there, then my child's not there. No, but I'm saying they're living their dream. Yeah. If the director is like. No, you can't be here. It's better for them. No, no. Like, we're pushing them. I'm going to take them. I'm going to make them a star. You just don't. The parents are like. Yeah. Lapping it up because then they've just <clears throat> lost all sense of like what it means to be a parent. Yeah. And safeguarding and protecting your child. All you're basically thinking about is the fame and the money that's going to come. And you just basically sold your child to the highest bidder. Sorry, I don't mean to be rude. I know I'm not a parent, so I don't want to yeah. like, speak out of turn, but that's more or less what, what it, is. it seems like. Child. I'm waiting for that documentary. Yeah, I do want to watch. It's called Quiet On Set, and it's a documentary yeah. about a lot of people that was like, on Nickelodeon, Disney and yeah. stuff, and just kind of shit that went down, basically, behind the... On set, while they were on quiet set. on set. Oof. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> on to uh, brighter things. Fuck them, fuck them. <laughs> I was about to say fuck them kids, but not fuck them no, kids. No, not fuck them kids, fuck them adults. <laughs> no, literally. Sorry, yeah, brighter things. So it's not too bright, but okay. I have got um, the the report, the 2024 report of fashion brands that have been ranked uh, in terms of like environmental justice, use Ooh. of raw materials by... The remake fashion is called the Remake Fashion Accountability Report. Nice, and they're basically a non-for-profit um, company mm. fighting for climate justice and fair pay in fashion. Okay, so in March they they pulled or they tested 
tested, I don't know, surveyed 52 of the largest companies that make around like $100 million, which is like 78 million pounds a year, which includes like Levi's, m and LVMH, ASOS, blah, 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 a score out of 50. And they're looking at like, mm. how much are you paying your peoples? Blah, blah, blah. Shein, Boohoo and Primark outperformed brrr, skims. Whoa. In terms of environmental justice and use of raw materials. So Skims, I see, you say Skims was the lowest. Yes. And there's no one lower than Skims. In those in those two categories. As in, not oh, wow. there's no one lower than Skims, but she in... Oh, the outperformed Boohoo Bang, group, there's others, okay. And Primark outperformed Skims, right? Mental. So... Basically, uh, each business receives a score out of 150 points and it's based on 88 individual metrics consisting of traceability, wages and well-being, commercial practices, raw materials, environmental justice and governance. So the score is based on the company's progress rather than their goals. So it's like, mm. how, you know, not like we're going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Skims, Timu, Misguided and Fashion Nova all scored zero. Okay out of 150 on, on these things, okay? Oh, shit. So a zero is indicative that it's not high on the company's list of priorities. So those things are just not there. So they're not really like, they're mm. doing anything. Uh, human How rights- How come you've got tissue in both hands? <laughs> 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 that really just threw me off. I don't know. I thought you did like a magic trick and you like, passed. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I can't just tell the news. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that whoa, that was <laughs> <laughs> so Everlane. I'm not too sure what that brand is, you can mm. go and Google it. But Everlane ranked first with 40 points, which is a very far, far away. This is, the, o- this is the overall now, everything. Oh, everything, okay, 40 out 40 out of 150. They were followed by HM Group, which scored 37. And then Puma, yeah, and then Puma, which scored thirty six. The average score was fourteen. So this is just to yeah. Can you re- can we re- recap? Recap. So each business receives a score out of one hundred and fifty points based on eighty eight individual metrics. <laughs> the highest scorer scored forty. That's really the bad. average score was fourteen. That's really bad. <laughs> really, really bad. Uh, so, which uh, the average score was 14, which is the same as in 2023, showing that companies have made little to no improvement to do better. You think? Right. So, fast fashion con- I can't say conglomerate. This. Thank you. Inditex, so that's like Yazara's, Pelimbears, and Bershka, outperformed luxury fashion houses mm-hmm. such as Brrr, Burberry and Chanel. Mm-hmm. The corporation scored more points than Patagonia, which is generally considered an eco-friendly company. <laughs> Patagonia is like you know the mountain warehouse people then wearing. There's a bit colour. It's not it's not Pangaea, but it's like similarish. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, so it's just a, gr- a whole bunch of greenwashing, a whole a bunch of waffle, whole bunch. If they don't care. Mm. They don't care and they'll be like, we're paying people fairly. D-. Well, you're not because what is this thing called again? <laughs> the, the remake in fashion says, the remake fashion accountability report says you're not. <laughs> She's like, motherfucker, where is it? <laughs> no, because I had to write across my lines. No. I had to write across my lines so I can't see. But um, I mean, I'm not surprised, yeah. but I'm also surprised because I guess like, you know, we sit on this pod day in, day out, cussing out the boohoos, the Primarchs, well, not so much Fair, Primark, yeah. but like the boohoos, the sheens, the teamies, da, 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 da. and it's like, actually, yeah. why do we just assume, well, we don't assume, mm. but why do we that like the Burberry's and the Chanel's are going to suddenly do better than them because they're more like, no, not yeah. necessarily. Yeah, but I but I do think that, I guess for me, if they're all not going to pay people wages and they're not really going to be conscious about their <clears throat> impact on the planet in the production, at least the quality 
is better in yeah. others where there is that reusability and it's not just going to end up in the landfill mm. in 12 months. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm just yeah. trying to like... Play know. devil's advocate. I'm trying, I'm God, trying to, she hasn't done that in about you know, three no, years. No, I'm not playing devil's advocate. I'm trying to justify why I'm still going to be cussing <laughs> all the fast fashion ones. But the way things are going now, financially with the increased cost of production and people are not spending as much, so sales are down, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. Because to be sustainable, it costs. Mm. And they're trying to cut costs. They are. So they're they're tr- they're calling my man like, where's the latest factory popped up that we could pay the people to be Literally. without anyone knowing? That. That's what it's going to get to. And it's... <sighs> yeah, it's difficult. It's hard, isn't it? It's difficult. I was quite surprised. No, I'm not quite surprised, but I like that there's like a survey like this. And mm. it's. I think it was just a scoring, just like blew my mind i was just like that is so bad the only but way not surprising but like yeah the highest score is 37 that, and then under that that's it was all because H&M. when you said the number i was like wait why are you starting at 40 like what's what? guanin in the 80s there isn't anything guanin in there is empty the only and then h&m change. and puma being like second and third is wild mm, i'm i'm not shocked H you conscious H&M conscious. We've got a whole podcast episode. I know, but they're doing better than everyone. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily on their clothes. Perhaps they're paying their workers. Wow. Well, they're their, conscious. Uh, they're the most conscious. They might, uh, maybe yeah, their well-being, their commercial practices. I doubt it's their yeah. raw materials. Well, well, you have but the recycle. their environmental justice. They have the recycle uh, thing. Get five pound or something. All of, all of that. But the only way this is going to change is through regulation. <clears throat> yeah. That's it's got to that point. It's like the talking, the not rioting. What's the peaceful one? The protesting. <laughs> Listen, I'm not trying to incite violence, but I do feel like as a people, we need to riot a little we, bit more. No, than God, we, do. we we actually need to riot. Like, like enough is enough, bro. I feel like we have grounds. We have at least like five to ten points. Sorry, I'm not even trying to take it there. Do you see what Tory said in their manifesto that they they get picked, they're gonna like freeze pension something something. I was like Freeze what would you mean? Like freeze the uh the age, the, the retirement. Age, age. Or no something to do with the like how much you can put in or something like that where like it's a good thing, like you'll be like saving more towards your pension or something. They're gonna freeze something yeah. that like benefits your pensions. And I just thought if any of you MFers fucking believe that shit <sighs> Yeah, I'm gonna get Uncle Abu on you because that's fucking shit. <laughs> that's sugary shit. <laughs> um, but you know, we've got bare reasons to write. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all the protests and all the chatting, all the articles, all the documentaries, it's not enough. They're just laughing at us. They're, they're it, giggling. Mate, it's capitalism. There's like, we profit, we exploit you. Done. We brainwash you. We use the media Rich, to brainwash this you. This NHS new thing, something, something. Mate, some- all of your news words are like something, something. Because <laughs> I just, I just skim read and I forget. But basically, a company, something to do with the NHS and the company that's invested in it that makes the money. Let me check okay. my phone if I have that. There's <laughs> a company that has done something in the NHS. And the people that have invested in that company is Rishi Sunak's wife. Oh, is it that um, they messed up the system? It's like they built yeah, the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emphasis. I think it's her dad's company yeah. or something. Yeah. The si- yeah, the system using the NHS or something is her dad's company. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. They have shares in. Like, what the hell, Wait, man? Let me check. There should be rules to, like, if you're on the government, you can't be having investment and yeah. shares and things that are like benefit. The, what, Do you the, get what I mean? the company they got a 35 billion it contract for nhs so we got there in the end we got there <laughs> 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 it's just oh my god to say it's fucking ridiculous is an understatement and it's like you're playing in my face this and this is what i mean like 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 like, not you actually doing this in 4k right in front of me and i can see you doing it but i can't actually do anything about it and first of all i don't know if it's first of all or third of all or second of all but you are actually an unelected um prime minister so i actually want you to act with a little bit more grace and stop taking the piss because what you're doing is you're actually taking the piss right in front of my face but he knows he's going so he's I need to do as much as I can to save my back. 35 bill. 
35 bill. What are you, you going to do with all that money? You're going to die soon anyway. You lot found all the money in the world to t- t- create all kind of bullshit contracts and the PPE and the track and trace app that never tracked and traced nobody. Nothing. Billions squandered. No one's accountable for it. And then <clears throat> we're all suffering. I saw this video. God bless the man. There was... um. I don't know what they call it when they all go in a room and they do question, they just, I don't know, yeah. inqui- not inquisition, but whatever. I, it's like a committee. And they had some um, representatives from some of the largest companies, um, British companies. And they basically said that, okay, you guys have been, bl- you blame COVID and you said, you know, um, you blame COVID and you blame the Russia-Ukraine war on the reason why, you know, sales were down, Costs have gone up, so we had to increase our prices um, to offset that, yeah. right? So for any, just, we're doing one, two, three ABC maths, right? Simple maths. Simple maths. So profit is the money you make minus the money you spend. So revenue minus cost gives profit, right? So if if your costs go up, let's say, okay, revenue, £100, Costs 20 pounds, profit 80. If your revenue stays the same and your costs have gone up to 60 pounds, your profit will go down to 40 pounds, 100 minus 60, right? So what they're basically saying is that our costs are going up, so we have to increase our prices so we can, when you increase the prices, you make more money Mm. to keep your profits more or less stable. It should be a kind of stable profit. The should go like that. It should go that. Right, yeah. because costs gone up, revenue price go up. No, the graph has gone from down here to fucking up in the sky. <laughs> most of their profits, right? Because their costs actually haven't mm. gone up, but the prices have gone up, and they are profiting off of us for absolutely no reason. Explain to me why my yeah my gas. An electric bill went from thirty pounds to two hundred pounds, but the gas companies are reporting record-breaking billions, record-breaking profits, and because of that, you know what? I'm not a fucking idiot. I ain't paying two hundred pounds. I ain't doing that. So you can suck that. You can suck it. I'm not doing it. And if you want to hear tips on how you can half your bill, let me know. All right. I will. I will give you the inside goss. It's ridiculous. That's mental. It doesn't make sense. The average household is spending so much more and you are making so much more at our expense. I don't give a heck. The queues for food banks actually bring a tear to me and my mom were driving on Friday. And they back call us Westfield. a first world country. The queue. Did you see the percentage of child uh, poverty. poverty in the UK is like 20 odd percent. Whereas in like Sweden, um, Switzerland and stuff, it's like 3.6, 2.4. It's in, it's child po- poverty. They're freezing and they're going to school so they can eat. Yeah, because you can't, would you put, would you put your heating <clears throat> on? not especially especially if it's people that are doing the um the key one the one that yeah. you have to top up if there's no coins it's then not going on it's not <sighs> I just, yeah. I said, what are we gonna do i don't know i think i'm thinking to Something leave this has Engli- to give. either i have to leave or we have to riot because it's like it is really so miserable like and I know we always sit here and we say, oh, it's so miserable here, it's so miserable. But, like, you really are just working to, like, go to sleep and wake up mm-hmm. and go to work. Like, you don't even just get to bills, enjoy yeah. the benefits of, like, your hard work. None. Like, there's no such thing as, like, a slow life, a, a chill life. Like, when I went to when I went to Florence, random, mm. and we had to get up really early in the morning for something. And it's, like, the hustle and bustle, like, people are going to work. But it's not that kind of hustle and bustle. Women are dressed up, they're about to go into the office, but they're sat outside having our fresco breakfast, eating their yogurt and granola, right? Everyone's buongiorno, buongiorno, grazie, grazie, getting their nice little ham sandwiches. It was just so yeah. 
nice to see, mm. like a nice, like enjoying their morning. Yeah. I would fucking wake up at seven o'clock as well if that was my morning, <laughs> meeting up with the girlies for a quick Drink espresso food, yeah. and a yogurt. But no, I'm stiff face on the tube because Sally Ann didn't brush her teeth in the morning. Everyone squish up, squish up. No one really wants to go to work. Don't have time to get my pret sandwich and my pret sandwich also cost me 50,000 pounds. And half of us are even trying to get the bus to cut costs. Right? Like it's just, I just, and that was just like one small thing, mm. but I just saw such a difference. And even like when I go to Turkey, like the inflation in Turkey is mad. Like people are fucking struggling. Mm. Like if you think it's mad here, it's absolutely like ridiculous ridiculous there how much the cost wow. of goods have gone up like unbelievable like it's gone up like literally like 130 percent it's mad but even like their way of life is so soft life but i'm struggling but it, with it's still soft like i can't so explain are we the it. problem then how can we inject elements of soft or you enjoyability can't because people are people are tiktoking I'm a, I'm a corporate girly. I wake up at 5 a.m. <laughs> I answer my emails, clear my inbox. Then I go to the gym. Then I do this. Then I get into the office for eight o'clock. I have my breakfast. I work all day. Then I work until 9 p.m. It's like the rebrand of the female boss. And it's like, <laughs> you don't have a life. That's mm. why. Because people are working their asses off to like climb positions, do this, do that. And you get two days of rest, 48 hours to yourself mm. to do everything else. And you're working like 17 hour days, 12 hour yeah. days. And then it's like, if you if you and actually want to make enough money to get to the point where you can potentially enjoy life, you might have to work a Sunday. This is what I'm saying. To ask your boss yeah. to climb the corporate ladder. And it's like, that's not a life mm. worth living. I like, no one is switching off their, and when you do switch your laptop off at five, it's like, oh. Not staying late. No. What the fuck? <laughs> Get my contract out right now. Because last time I checked, my contract said I finished at half five if I work at 9.30. Oh. Do you get? I get. <laughs> How did we get here? I don't even know. Actually, so needed. While we're just quickly kind of talking about financials, I just want to give some like finance in fashion or whatever my segment's called. Oh, yes. Some updates. So this one's a bit of an old one. We're looking at my dry looks. They are a bit dry. They they are. A bit white. I've never seen them like that. Yeah. God, it's oh, I was just so tired this morning. Couldn't be able to cream. Right. Um, right, so Ted Baker. It's not looking good, bruv. Oh no. Gone are the days of those paint and bags and paint paint and paint and the paint and bags I and was paint. a Ted Baker paint Bro! and bag girl. When that bag came dropped, out. Are you mad? I was in secondary school, but but yeah. but and when it broke, I took it Mate, back it was to Ted Baker. It was the most impractical thing. The handles would just, <laughs> the plastic would just break off. I said to Ted, can you no, literally. give me another one, please? So shout out to anyone that still shops at Ted Baker Euro One. So in August, 2022, Ted Baker was sold to Authentic Brands Group, also known as ABG, for 211 million. So ABG also own Forever 21, they own Hunter, they own Juicy Couture, Reebok, Nine Wests. So they were trying to, you know, add it to their portfolio mm. or whatever. The La Rasta. Uh, La Rasta. <laughs> Rasta. That was a really good sound. <laughs> and um, yeah, so not- It's a bad bit genre. <laughs> <laughs> but Ted Baker is not it's a bad, bad bit genre. At all. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of money spent on a brand that's, dying in my personal humble opinion especially post covid i feel like that is like insane amount to spend but they recently announced that they will be closing just under 100 high street stores between 80 and 90 um they cited financial issues um increased rents but i think the most um the no notable reason was apparently, it's all really weird, all these brands where they structured themselves. But there's another brand company called AARC who own and operate, they have a license to own and operate retail stores in the e-commerce platform for Ted Baker. It's 
very bizarre. What? No, literally. It's all very bizarre. So they themselves have had a lot of financial issues, that right. company. And they were supposed to like invest and make improvements. And they kept saying, yeah, Maji, like we're going to do it. We're going to do it. And ABG kind of gave them money to be like, we'll sort prop you out. up to sort it out. And everything's crumbled. And ABG are just like, this is a fucking mess. So they were actually, AARC, was a, they had the license for UK and EU. Oh. And then ABG obviously had the global to everywhere else. But I guess Ted Baker being, is a British brand, right? Yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. I don't know. Ted Baker. Um, yeah. yeah, bigger presence in the UK and Europe, mainly you. Why is Ted Baker? Bro. I just know the one that was on Regent Street. It's not looking good. So it's yeah, not. stores are closing, jobs are getting lost. Really sad. Um, I is say it? that with a smile on my face. Really. So no, what's sad is like when we have kids, it's like, there's going to be no shops. Like, mm. there's not going to be like, let's go down to the West End. No, like, that's going to be all them sweet, gonna be sweet shops. Sweet shops. It's going to be Devoir. like, go on. <laughs> like, bare sweet shops and then just Manier de Voir with their 100 year lease. <laughs> that was not nice. It wasn't, was it? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, gosh. Um, and then, sorry, one more quick one. Um, it's not looking good for Gucci, bruv. Oh. It's not looking good for Gucci. So we did speak about um, the recent Ancora collections from new creative designer, create, creative, creative Direct director. director. Open your eyes and your ears and your soul. Sabato DeSano. And in hindsight, sometimes you need to sit on it, right? In the moment, I was like, I really love this. Like, yeah. it's really... But you know what? It's pretty bland. <laughs> yeah, given anything. You know, it was like it was like quiet luxury, but like heavy on the quiet side. Yeah. And I feel like in the world where people don't have that much money, if I'm going to spend on luxury, you better know. I, I want it. I'm in my maxim maximalist era. Yeah. Like I want it to be like this. Cost me seven hundred dollars. Yeah. You know. Um. So yeah. So basically, caring Gucci accounts for fifty percent of caring sales. Oh gosh. So, Gucci sales are down 20% in Q1, and this caused the share price to drop by 13.3%. And Sorry for... to all the investment huns. No, literally, all my, all my... Um... TikTok investors. <laughs> oh, there's other stock market. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so Kering had to I issue a profit warning. This is actually mainly due to slumped sales, specifically in the Asia-Pacific region, mm. predominantly China. Um, interesting. <laughs> why did I say that? I don't know why. Sorry. Interestingly, what we don't talk about, because we always say, you know, the Chinese are the leaders in um, luxury sales, luxury fashion, but we don't necessarily comment on what might be happening and causing it. And you, t you just say, oh, like we're all going through things, we're going through things. So apparently the yen is having issues. I don't know, my FX traders, currency bros, you guys know when the, the money goes against the money. But there's a little bubble. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bubbling property crisis out there. Oh. Yes, property crisis. And um, statistic is that 70% of Chinese household wealth is invested in property. So if the property market's not doing well. They ain't got no peas. They ain't got peas if most of their wealth is linked in to the, the money that they make oh. from the property market. So that's kind of bubbling. So they're like, I ain't getting no Gucci. Yeah. And if I if I am going to spend, I'm going to like, you know, yeah. make it make sense. Interesting. So yeah, the quiet luxury era for Sabato de Sano might not be paying off. You might need to come with something really, um, I don't know, extra, extra, read all about it. Well, you might <laughs> want to not do so much because 65% of consumers rely less on fashion influencers than ever before. Agree. The State of Fashion Report by Business of Fashion. <laughs> do, 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 do. And uh, McKinsey says that consumers are more interested in less polished aesthetics, quirkiness and humour when they're being influenced to buy. Wait, say that. Sorry, say that again. So consumers are more interested in less polished aesthetics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quirkiness, not less quirkiness, but quirky, more quirkiness. More quirkiness. Yeah, okay, yeah, that was it. And yeah. humour. So Agree, yes. Yes. So, da, 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 da. 
<laughs> so while traditional influencers who convey an aspirational lifestyle still command large audiences, other creators who come across as less scripted are gaining huge traction online. Mm-hmm. So this report highlighted that talents such as like Alex L, Madeline RG and Sabrina Bassoon are the types of people that that consumers are looking up to mm-hmm. to influence what they're wearing because they ain't looking at the luxury sugar mamas who are because it's just un it's not unachievable <sighs> but it's just not realistic for the time that we're living in it's also just so boring yeah like why are you cosplaying as a 45 year old middle-aged woman yeah it's so weird so so the survey had 2,955 respondents from the UK, US and China and found that 65% of those respondents rely less on fashion influencers than ever before and instead prefer to engage with entertaining and relatable personalities for inspiration. Um, so yeah, and this also aligns with like the report that they found in 2023. So things aren't really... We're on a trajectory. No, what's a trajectory? Mm, yeah, 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 we're on a trajectory, trajectory basically. Uh, so trajectory yeah, trajectory to where? From to where? just like... No, that's what I mean. That's the wrong word. We're just on a one Journey. line. Like nothing. Oh, things going, are changing. Things nothing. aren't really changing. Oh, okay. it's, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's consistent. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> no, because you were like on a journey. Really? So I was like, yeah, no, that no, is that's a the line being oh, You went straight. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so plateaued. Yeah. Plateaued. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, yeah, basically. And I mean, I'm not surprised. And I think we've spoken about this mm. whole, like for ages, like, all those put together TikToks like aren't doing it. No. We want like the your date we want the roses of the world. Because if ro- <laughs> I'm about to eat one of Rose's dinners. Oh, okay. Not her Domino's. Do- what is it? Domino's order. Uh, do- like, do you get, like, that is what they want. Um, yeah. And I think it links to other, um, there's been like so many articles in recent times about people are looking for connection. They're looking for relatability. Yeah. They're looking f- to see themselves in the people that they um, subscribe to. Mm. I think that era of, This is how it actually happened. And this is people completely forget. All the luxury influencer babes started off as everyday girls on YouTube. Yeah. They were everyday gum, showing you my makeup <clears throat> routine. The makeup wasn't really that great. The aesthetic wasn't really that great. The money wasn't in. They were just doing it for the love of it. And they had the, at the time, whatever personality or whatever it was mm. that um, was relatable, whether they're on YouTube or Instagram. Then they blew up as influencers because yeah. people loved them for who they are. And their lifestyle changed. They had more money. Therefore, they can afford nicer things. So then the new entrance into the market new content creators instead of just starting from where these people started as your authentic self they're trying to cosplay yeah, and as jump. the already established influencer and think that's what's going to sell and for a time it did because it was it was like the melissa melissa's wardrobe's heyday i'm not saying her heyday's past because she is who she is but in that time of like oh girls go get this Bottega bag go get the all the girls were doing it and it's like just your everyday friend is now trying to do Middle-aged mama. I was going to tweet the other day. Sometimes I always censor myself because I tweet stuff and then I'm like, you just sound really angry and it's also yeah, like yeah, 9.30. Bitter, yeah. It's like 9.30 a.m. But I was like, do people seriously like dressing like this? <laughs> no, I was like, do you a- do you actually find joy <clears throat> in dressing like a middle-aged mother? Mm. You're in your youth. You're in your prime. Like, get your why, legs out. Like, why legs are you out. dressing like a walking advert for LK Bennett? LK Bennett. And Joan's boots makeup. Do you know, but do you know what? Like, I'm t- I'm t- It's really stressing me out. And spending, like, out. 500 pounds on, like, some, like, mad knitted maxi skirt that's, like, sun, sun, sunset vibe and like I'm all for modest I'm all for modest dressing but I just I just want people to just find their authentic self whatever that looks like and just lean into it we don't I I can't wait to be a mother to dress I can't my wait. little girl you, in little like dungarees. Not even dress a girl, like, but I can't wait to get to that era and I'm driving my Jeep oh. and I'm doing the school run and I'm dressing appropriately for that chapter of my life. Yeah. I don't need to do it now. Because now, listen, this is what's going to happen, yeah? My kids are going to be on Twitter or whatever it is that's going to be there 
Post in my hot Post mom. In my, this is my hot mom. Look at my <laughs> mom with her like booty out or whatever. Maybe not necessarily. Maybe not booty out. out. But like, you know, <laughs> all my cool. all like my hot Las Vegas Santa Pay pics, yeah. When your kids are gonna be posting your Las Vegas and Santa Pay pics and you're wrapped up. Look at that moaning myrtle. Like, yeah. what the hell? And who's gonna win? My kids. <laughs> Why? Because I was being young, dumb, living off mum. Like literally just like doing my Enjoy thing. Enjoy yourself. Like, oh, I just I know it I know it's hard and we have all these conversations about like be yourself finding your as personal, well. Do whatever you want. Like, finding we your personal don't care. Do what you style want and all of this stuff and blah blah. And it is it is sometimes hard to find your personal style in the noise, but like come on. Like stop when you when you're doing um lights, camera, action, action and you're cosplaying, you need to just hang it up. Yeah. Like if you can't walk into a store and authentically find things that you like without having sat on your phone and scrolled through somebody's page and said, where'd you get that from? And gone on, you should be able to like, do you know what I mean? Mm. We're not it's saying too, don't take influence. There's too much copy paste. Either. And they all have, they all, there's an aesthetic. And they all look the same. It's scary. There's an aesthetic, and it's it's. The, let me tell you this for free. I might look like shit now, but that fucking aesthetic looks like a joke. That is some sugary shit. It's some sugary shit, and you're gonna look back at pictures in two years and be like, "Why? What was I doing? Wake the fuck up! No, <laughs> <laughs> wake the fuck, fuck up!" up. Oh, that's a great way to end up the podcast. <laughs> Guys, you know where we are every Thursday Woo! on Apple Podcast, still spotlighting. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please do leave us a review and a five star rating. Ding! Uh, if you want further episodes, head over to our Patreon. Yes. Uh, where we will be talking about our dating lives. Dating and, lives. And I've actually got a very important question to ask Prinny. <laughs> That has been on my mind. I'm so scared. For so long. <gasps> and I need to ask it. So, yeah. Oh my God. I don't even, I don't want this. I don't want this. On that note. Take me again. away. Bye. Bye. <laughs>